Hey guys, Nike here. I am back, and this was a much requested video. This is, if you didn't see the title, my account tour. I did one of these account tours before HOT uh, a long, long time ago, and quite a bit has changed, and uh, I thought, and after many, many people requested this, and I saw some other people in the community doing it, I figured it is time for me to do an update. Uh, this should be a pretty long video. I'm going to touch on my characters, their gear, what I have in my bank, what everyone has in their inventory, and then look at uh, Guild Wars 2 efficiency stuff to show me some statistics on my account. And then I'm going to uh, get into sort of the goals that I want to pursue in the future and where and what I'll hopefully have on my account by the next time I do an account tour. So uh, that's basically it, and uh, stick around and hope you guys enjoy this. All right, so the first few characters we're going to talk about are, and I'm going to show you, are basically mules that I have parked uh, at different places that do different things for me. The first one is my Char Thief, one of my most hated characters. Um, for whatever reason, when I was new to the game, I was I, I just thought it was amazing that I played an Asura warrior who's a little guy that that hit really hard. Um, and, and was like, and all, had all this damage in his Berserker gear and his little tiny Asura body. And so I thought it would also be cool if I played, if I made my Thief the biggest max sized male Char, and he's like a master of stealth. Like, how could something so big and bruising be a master of stealth? And I thought that was really cool. Um, but what ended up happening was, is the fact that I ended up just hating the character. Uh, and playing it was awful. The animations are awful. Char armors are awful. Um, so, so yeah. So, as far as gear goes, this character doesn't have much. Uh, as you can see, no armor. And only uh, two exotic level uh, things. The trinkets are incomplete. This is definitely not a character I play in anything. I have it parked here at the end of the Draconis Mons jumping puzzle. Just so that I can loot the free... Uh, orchids uh, every day um, but yeah it doesn't really have any use other than that let me just check the age for this guy I have played this character for 329 hours which is which is a lot um, I believe this character does have world completion uh, let's see uh, I guess it, yeah I, I have world completion on this character uh, mostly because uh, world completion was really easy to get on a thief more easy than other things I needed it for a legendary at one point but yeah 329 hours obviously not a character I play uh, a great deal so let's swap so the next character <clears throat> this is my Asura Asura NG uh, I made this character specifically to play PvP in uh, it had no other no other use than PvP. Um, for a while, I was really into playing NG in PvP, which is pretty unbelievable. I, I, I could imagine most people thinking that, but that's what I did. Um, and then I wanted to make use of it in PvE, so I had this idea that one of my, my Norn NG, that's like my main NG, would be like my power NG, and, and this would be my Condi NG, and I would keep their gear separate. But... As it turned out, I just hated the fact of having two NGs that had separate gear, um, and it, it just bothered me for whatever reason. So, the Norn NG became the NG that has both everything, and this NG became uh, a mule that collects jumping puzzle rewards. And as you can see, no gear, no trinkets. Incidentally, I do have a whole bunch of crystalline bands and red ring of deaths in the inventory. It's, these are like pretty much the only uh, central Corteria stat rings that I keep. Pretty much just for nostalgia reasons. Because I remember when Fractals were new and we were uh, looking at all that. Uh, and playing it and trying to get our characters ascended gear. It was really, really amazing. And, and you could only get these randomly from, from RNG drops. Like just having both rings was like the happiest greatest accomplishment in the game um, and I just remember how happy I was when my red ring of death uh, finally dropped 
I was like super, super, super happy. So uh, I don't trash those or salvage them. I just keep them for nostalgia purposes. Um, and let's see how old this character is. Uh, this character is 14, almost 15 hours old. So you can see I, uh, it, even its PvP life was pretty short, uh, short lived. So moving on. Next up is my Silvari Ellie. The the fun story of this Ellie uh, is that this was my main Ellie for a really long time. And let's see what the age says. Uh, 141 hours. I basically use this for dungeons. I didn't really do any open world, but this this Ellie does have quite a bit of dungeon experience. Back when like Scepter Hammer was the main build, and then then Staff sort of came out. Uh, but essentially, I keep no gear. I have an exotic scepter for some reason on this character with a Night Sigil, but no gear. Um, again, it, it's here to collect rewards from this jumping puzzle every day, but. So why did I replace this this Ellie if it was my main Ellie? The answer to that is I didn't care for the armor that was available to a light armored Silvari. I did have the tier three armor and I just hated it. I hated the look, I hated the character. I hated the way weapons looked in the character's hands. I hated the way uh, a lightning hammer looked when this Ellie picked it up. So I, did embrace the uh, the human female meta and and stopped using this character. Uh, so next, next is Nike Bag Opener. Nike Bag Opener has one of the most important jobs of all my characters. This is a low level character, which is important because I use him, as you can see, he's level 50. I use him to open the bags of gear because you get more loot, better loot, when you uh, open them on a level 50 or so. Um, as you can see from gear, he still has all his starter stuff. I haven't even opened all of the things. He hasn't trained all that stuff. And as far as age goes, he's seven and a half hours old and 99% of that time has been spent opening loot bags. Um, one interesting thing is he does have uh, mostly 20 slaughters uh, to aid in the loot bag situation. But uh, yeah, Nike bag opener. Do use that guy quite a bit. Then I have my human female ranger. Um, for a while, uh, for the same reason that I was not using my Silvari uh, Ellie anymore, I didn't want to use my Silvari uh, Ranger, even though tier three Silvari medium armor is one of the best armors in the game. I was already sort of using it on my thief and I didn't want the same look and I really wanted a human female. Unfortunately, right, when I had, right before I had the idea to make this character and I rolled this character, leveled it up to 80, um, right before I had that idea, it turned out that Silvari had uh, the the elite skills that were just way, way, way better for a Kondi Ranger or a Kondi Druid, and there was really just no comparison. Like you were flat out playing a worse version of the class if you were playing human, and it was just night and day different. And so basically, I benched this character. Um, and now it collects loot from jumping puzzles um, and it, it serves no real purpose on my account. And as you can see, it has the level 80 boost gear, uh, complete garbage. Um, but I did use a level 80 boost on it. I guess at this point I could go back and, uh, and make this my main, but my main druid. But at this point I'd have to go around unlocking pets and stuff. And I'm really just not prepared to do that unless they made pet unlocks account based. No, nope, of course they didn't. Yeah, I'm not going to go on a Pokemon rampage and try to collect all the pets. Uh, that would not be productive. So this character will remain a mule from here on out. And then my last of my mules is Mini Nike. Mini Nike was, uh, if you 
are not longtime viewers, my main character. This was my main warrior. His name was Nike. And uh, that character lasted me a long time. I love this look. I love the tier 3 heavy Asura armor. I think this is one of the best armors in the game. And it dies really well, and it looks cool, and it's exactly what you'd expect from an Asura warrior. Um, what ended up happening was I made Twilight, and Twilight looked a little meh on him, uh, being so small. But um, I was fine with it. It was cool. Then I made Frostfang, and Frostfang isn't the best looking legendary under the best circumstances, but on an Asura, it was tiny. It was a toothpick, and you couldn't see it. It didn't even look like legendary. It just looked like a crappy blue axe, and I was really unhappy. And I saw other people in my guild who had Frostfang on normal size characters like Norns and humans, and it looked much better, and I'm like, forget this, I have to make a human. And so that is where my current human warrior comes from that most people would recognize as my main character. And this guy was retired to uh, basically opening, these, opening this jumping puzzle. But I also use this guy for PvP, which is why I have so much um, different gear on him. Uh, he, he is set up for PvP. Uh, and that, this is that's pretty much what I would use on this character. And I think, let's see his age. I've played this character for 1,500 hours. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of how much time went into this character. Um, a good deal of it was actually in PvP. Uh, most of my hours played of PvP have been on this character. And uh, quite a bit of fractaling. I think this character leveled up to... This character leveled up to fractal level 80 when fractal levels were character-based, not account-based, and when uh, it was really, really, really hard and challenging to get to fractal level 80. So that is a, now a, a, an accomplishment that can't really be measured or, or demonstrated, but this character was one of the OG original level 80 fractalers. So uh, that is it for my jumping puzzle mules. Now I'll get into my actual characters that I use uh, every day. All right, so first up of my uh, my normal characters, this is my Mesmer, uh, Nike Distortia, uh, human female, as uh, most characters should be in this game. Uh, log in. Most of my characters are parked at either the uh, the rich platinum node or the patch of um, flax and they go back and forth wherever they start the day they'll end at the other and they stop at the iron node in between so that's why you're going to see all my characters here the character is currently set up and geared as a um, mirage um, I was going to re-gear it this is like the meta this was like set up as like the phantasm mirage build um, because that's when I geared it when the Phantasm build was in, but uh, I was just about to re-gear it to the, the current clone build before I made this video, and they made the announcements of uh, the change to Phantasms uh, for Mesmer, and I assume that's going to have some kind of an impact on on the, 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 the Mirage gearing. So I'm just going to wait and see what, the, what the, all the changes are and, and how that changes the gearing before... I go ahead and uh, re-gear this character to be 100% meta compliant. Um, additionally, I do keep in my inventory um, uh, a set of chrono gear. It's full, 100% full commanders um, with leadership runes. Uh, it's way overkill. I don't ever really play chrono in raids, so I don't care to have the meta and I know and unfortunately with chrono if you want to be a chrono main you have to be able to move around and change your gear from boss to boss so that you can deal with the other chrono and you can deal with potential aggro issues and and min max and so if you are a dedicated chrono or even a semi-dedicated chrono you have to keep lots and lots of different gears um I basically have this as a catch-all it uh if in case there's some goddamn emergency where I have to play Chrono, 
I will, uh, I, I have gear to do it on hand, um, but heaven forbid your group ever requires me to play Chrono. Um, so what is the age on this? It, this character is 547 hours old. I don't think, no, it doesn't have world completion. Doing world completion on a Chrono is pretty dismal. It's probably better now on Mirage, but, uh, still not going to be something that I, uh, spend any time doing. So, yeah, that's it for this character. Let's move on to the next. All right, next up is my thief, Nike Foros. This is the character who replaced the Char Thief. Um, as you can see, looking at the Char Thief and then looking at this guy, tier three, um, tier three, Silvari medium is ridiculously good-looking armor. Uh, it dies really well, especially on males, uh, male Silvaris. I mean, this setup just looks really strong. I mean, this armor is just great. They still have not done a job of making a better non-legendary armor, in my opinion. Um, so this character is set up right now as a daredevil uh, power. Let's do age first, because I have done quite a bit of play on this. I've played this character for 560 hours, which which really is odd, because I've actually played this character quite a bit um, in dungeons. I've even done a world completion. So I've done a world completion on this character, and I played it a lot in dungeons, and even some in raids, and yet it's only 13 hours more than I've played my uh, Mesmer, which either shows you that I've played my Mesmer a lot more than I thought, or I haven't played this character as much as I thought. But I do, I do very much enjoy this character. Um, it's like I said, it's set up with full ascended berserker. Um, I actually have uh, my real legendary dreamer on this character. Uh, I do not have that parked on some other character, but yes, I keep my keep my legendary dreamer here. Um, However, my legendary Bifrost is on my Ellie. I just have the uh, the staff on this guy. Now, as far as the infusions go, uh, as you can see, I have two precise infusions and a precise infusion in the back. I don't know if this character is exactly 100% meta since really this doesn't get a lot of play in raids anymore. Uh, I haven't kept up with what the correct amount of infusions are. So I have the infusions from the old meta where... Um, where three precision infusions was the optimal setup for this guy. Um, additionally, uh, as you can see, I have another set of armor. This is set up for Condi, um, and con full set of Condi trinkets. I have an Ascended Berserker sword in case that ever comes back into play. I have Ascended Berserker daggers, um, and dual ascended berserker pistols one of which is my actual quip this one is my actual legendary quip which i keep on this guy and then i have of course uh a condi dagger interestingly enough you see i do only have one condi dagger i needed a condi dagger on another class for some reason and since I hardly ever got to play Condi Thief in raids, I borrowed it from this character and have never given it back. And since I play this one so infrequently, especially on Condi in raids, I haven't really got around to ever uh, giving it a new Condi dagger, even though I could. Um, I guess if Condi Thief ever really makes a huge comeback in the meta and is played a lot, I can re-gear it and, and do that. But for now... Uh, we'll just leave it like this. Um, but yeah, I really like this character. I like the way it looks. I like uh, I like everything about it. Unfortunately, it's just not quite meta for for DPS builds in, in raids or dungeons or fractals for that matter. Thief is in kind of a, a bad spot as at the time of this video. If you're watching this video two years from now, who knows? But uh, right now, this guy doesn't see a lot of play, and it's unfortunate. So we'll move on. Next up is my Revenant, Nike Anelia. Um, Nike Anelia is a Revenant that was created minute one of the 
HOT launch. It was the first character I made. We'll log in. As you can see, wearing human T3 with wide-rimmed glasses. Um, and then all white mantle weaponry. Uh, so this character is sort of got the white mantle theme. It's currently wearing full Magi's gear um, in hand kiter configuration. Uh, that's what this character is geared for now, is hand kiting. Um, what else is noteworthy? I do have a set of Condi gear that I can play uh, Condi Renegade on, which is a really fun to play build. I have a full set of Berserker gear for whenever Power Revenant comes back into play. Uh, Power Herald is super fun. And I, I really actually like the way that this character looks when it's geared. I don't know, it's super fun. So you can do like sword, 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 axe. So yeah, I don't know. I really like the way this character looks. It has, the Berserker build also has the gold fractal weapon skin theme. Uh, I try not to uh, use the th different weapon themes on different character on the same characters. Um, so yeah, this is the character that I put my gold fractal weapon skin. Some people say the gold fractal weapon skins look ugly. Maybe I agree with you, um, but I think they they do go with this particular look for whatever that's worth. I'm just gonna put the right trains on this guy. Uh, let's see. Berserker backpack. So, got the right uh, right gear on my Berserker Herald. Um, I like this character. Uh, it's fun. I hope that Revenant comes back. Played this guy for 151 hours. Obviously not nearly as much as uh, some of my others. But I played it a lot when, a, when HRT was new. For a while there, Power Herald was very, very meta in raids and one of the top DPS builds in the game. And also had a ton of utility. Um, but, and especially, I actually really liked playing this in Fractals because it pretty much did everything. Um, but now, uh, it's kind of fallen by the wayside as in terms of Revenant. I play it, like I had, as you saw, I had it set up for hand kiting at Deimos, which is where I would end up playing this the most. Um, I do have, like I said, the full setup of, of gear for Condi Renegade, but I don't really get to play that as much, um. And it's not nearly as good at running around open world uh, as either the Magi's or the Berserker would be. Um, so I tend to not keep it in that configuration uh, for too long. All right, so that's it for Mr. Renegade. This is my hollow, Nike Sklarina. I guess I should say my engineer, because it's not always a hollow smith. Sometimes it's Condi NG, but rarely at this point. Um, character i really like this character it's my only norn which is an interesting bit of trivia uh i really like the look of this character i like medium sets that aren't trench coats which i think most of the community agrees with me on and i think this is a really cool look it's kind of got like a skin tight jumpsuit thing um like a leather jumpsuit look uh very form-fitting and i like this is one of the few characters that i think looks good uh with the scarf and, and glasses combo that's that's very meta so I do have that on this character um, it's set up for hollow smith right now um, I have my real predator on this character this is where I keep my actual legendary predator um, and I have the character geared also optionally I have uh, a full condi set although I don't know when or if condi NG will ever come back in the meta, but for now, I have the ability to do that if I wanted to, but for now, it's hollow. Uh, additionally, in, I have a Ascended Sword and Ascended Power Pistol in case um, Sword is ever buffed on Hollow Smith and becomes meta. I can, I can swap that right in. Uh, I was really hoping that it would be, so I went ahead and made one, and I even wasted a lot of resources getting a Power Pistol even though it's a Condi weapon. Um, just hoping that Sword would be meta, but turns out it's not, uh, for now anyway, at the time of this video. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I like this character quite a bit. Um, and that's really basically it in its inventory. Nothing special to talk about on Nike Scorina. All right, my Necro, Nike Profirogenita. This character, uh, it's so funny when, um, Nike Profirogenita is additionally the name of my main uh, character, my warrior in Guild Wars 1. And uh, I wanted to keep the name, I wanted to continue using that name, but I didn't want to name my warrior that in Guild Wars 2, I just wanted to name it Nike. Uh, so I kept the name and put it on my Necro. Incidentally, uh, I was going to be a necromane, as odd as that might sound from uh, someone who's so noted for warrior and someone who's, uh, let's just say, debated quite a bit with uh, necro players in the community uh, for a while. Um, I was going to be a necromane. Uh, in the betas, the first, I think there was three or maybe four betas before launch of Guild Wars 2. In the first three betas, I played exclusively Necro. I was sold on the class. It was, uh, in my opinion, it was fun to play. I liked it. I was having a blast with it um, and, and just in, enjoying it quite a bit. But then on the last beta, one of my friends convinced me to just play something else. Like we, we were in a group and we were doing the same thing for the first few betas. Then we decided for the last beta... We would just play different characters from what we were playing before and just, just to see and how they went. And I ended up uh, rolling uh, a warrior for that and uh, a great sword warrior. Uh, and I was blown away by how much better it felt than Necro. Um, I, w I had such a fun time playing Necro that I didn't realize it, it kind of sucked. Cause it, and because I hadn't played anything else yet. Um, and uh, once I played Warrior, and and how fluid and and cool the Hundred Blades animation was, I was like, okay, that's it. I am going to be a Warrior main at launch. Um, and I also knew uh, from Guild Wars One history that Warrior was Anet's uh, golden child, and Warrior would never be out of the meta. And if even if it was temporarily, Anet would do something to bring it back because Warrior is. Probably the most popular class in the game overall numbers wise and Anet's not going to do something that's going to alienate the majority of the player base So I kind of benched uh, my dreams of being a necromane and Went into being a warrior main that said um, I do like the look of this character. Uh, I like the way uh, The gear looks most of this gear is very basic like cheap gear that anyone can get um, and it's not really special. There's like nothing prestigious about any of this stuff. Maybe the tier three human shoulders are, are somewhat expensive, but just the way everything comes together, it actually looks like this was meant to be a set, um, which I think is very cool. This looks like it was like you would, if you saw this, you would assume that this was a set of everything matching. Um, but as you see, uh, it's really kind of just hodgepodge, but it, it just happens to go well together. Because um, we have the, the, the Necro Mask eyes, the Tier 3 Human Shoulders, like exotic level things, um, Acolyte Pants, which I believe are like Tier 2 Human Pants, and then like random Diviner Boots, which I think are, I don't even know where those come from, but, but nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, it all comes together and looks pretty good. As you can see, it's set up right now um, as a uh, a Condi Scourge. I don't know if it's meta at, at this point, the, the runes. I haven't really played this much. I think I've played it twice in raids since uh, POF came out and only for like one boss at a time. So I haven't really kept up too much with what the meta is. So my gear is probably all wrong. Um, but one cool thing uh, that I have that a lot of people don't have is that I use exclusively for my Necro uh, the weapons from Twilight Arbor Aetherpath. It's all Aetherpath skins. One, because I like Aetherpath skins, and two, I think it actually goes with this armor look really well. The color is just perfect for the armor look. Um, 
and I think they're very cool skins. I have the uh, Aetherpath dagger uh, here. Um, I also have the Aetherpath staff and greatsword unlocked for uh, those builds. If greatsword power reaper ever comes back, you will see this character looking pretty much like this, but with a Twilight Arbor Aetherpath greatsword. Um, and then I have staff for whatever reason. Uh, I don't, I used to have, I still do actually have a set of power berserker gear. Um, but I, I, and I guess I have the trinkets too. And I have, well, I guess I have, uh, the weapons as well. And I also have a Condi greatsword. Uh, the Condi Aetherpath. I have my Aetherpath greatsword on, on, except for Condi. Because for a while on Condi Reaper, greatsword was meta. Um, but I guess I'm ready, sort of, if, if Power Reaper comes back. I have, I have that, and I have some, uh, well, I have some healing weapons, too, for a meme Scourge build. But, yeah, I mean, I don't play this character a ton, so I haven't really put too much effort into its gearing. Um, let's see, Age. Age is 180 hours, not a lot of play time on this guy. Not really, uh, not really one of my mains, so... Moving on. Now we're getting to the characters that I like a lot more and play quite a bit more. Um, this is my Guardian Nike Argyra. Um, I really, really like Guardian. I've said this before kind of offhandedly on, on Twitter and, and in streams that I... If I was starting the game today... Brand new account, playing the game, starting the game today, and I was looking to play Guild Wars 2, I would be a main guardian. And if I knew now, or if I knew if I knew then what I know now, I would have rolled guardian from the start. Um, now you might say that's odd because warrior is what I'm so known for, and also warrior has always been meta, and there's been a lot of times where guardian isn't meta. To be honest, I don't care. Um, I like. Especially now, I love uh, the Dragon Hunter. Uh, I think people give give it shit for the rotation being easy, but I think that's kind of like hyperbole. It's not really any easier than than most other classes. It's, I mean, it is what it is. It's it's it, it's it's the same level of difficulty as anything else. And I think people that would say otherwise to a great deal are are deluding themselves. Um, but enough about that. Uh, I played this character 501 hours. Uh, a lot of that, uh, almost all of that in dungeons. Uh, did not uh, play this guy in fractals too much and definitely have not played it as much as I would like in raids. Um, all, all 500 of those hours are in fractals and I believe world completion. I do have it set up, as I said, for Berserker, uh, Dragon Hunter, which is one of my favorite builds. But I do also have a set of Firebrand gear of full sinister firebrand gear in my inventory. Uh, I do like firebrand as well, and I think firebrand is really cool, really cool elite spec, and has a great future ahead of it. Um, at the time you're watching this video, um, so and that and that's one of the reasons why I really like the the guardian class and why I would ha be happy to to main it is that it has multiple valid playstyles. Dragon Hunter is a very valid DPS class, completely reasonable. Um, Firebrand is a very, very viable DPS class and also is going to have a lot of support uh, elements that are very valuable. And even uh, something I don't have geared, but um, maybe will be something bigger in the future, would be like a full Minstrel's uh, support Firebrand. Uh for, for just amazing easy pug carries. It's really good uh, really good support class. And uh, I, I think that the fact that you can play a full Berserker DPS build, a full Condi DPS build, a Condi hybrid support DPS build, and then like a full support build, and you have that many viable builds in one class that are all more or less uh, raid or whatever viable... And they're all fun, uh, which I should add. Uh, makes Dragon Hunter a really cool uh, class, in my opinion. Um, as far as gear, I believe none of these legendaries are real. I think that they are all transmutes. Um, 
yeah the yeah these are all all transmuted legendaries um unfortunately no legendaries on this guy but who knows if this ever becomes my main that'll probably change It'll probably be all legendaries um but yeah that's it for the dragon hunter now we're getting to the classes that i have legendary armor on first up is ellie as you can see my ellie nike maxima is quite a bit better looking character even though some people would say that the legendary light armor isn't very good looking this is quite a bit of a better looking character than my silvari um and i would agree with anyone who said that um currently set up as a weaver uh with staff um this is my actual bifrost and additionally this character is where i keep my actual crate kin um maybe someday we'll be able to use underwater skills on land in a future elite spec uh that would be cool it would be nice to be able to wield crate kin on uh on land but for now uh it is set up for staff weaver um as far as alternative gear sets i do have a full magi set for times when you need to heal noobs uh in in pug raids or whatever i have that that ready to go um i also have berserker dagger two berserker daggers two berserker focuses with different sigils depending on what i'm doing um i have my actual legendary meteorologicus uh it would be great if scepter was a uh a viable weapon once more i think i think most hardcore ellie players um the most fun in the raid era that they had was playing uh scepter warhorn fresh air i think they would would tell you that that was the most uh uh, fun rotation and skill rewarding rotation. I don't really ha necessarily have an opinion on that, but that's kind of unanimous is my understanding um, uh, of their position on that. And even before that, I really liked Scepter Dagger or Scepter Focus um, Lightning Hammer Dungeon Build. Uh, so uh, Scepter and Meteorologicus is one of my absolute favorite legendaries. Um, it just looks, I think, the footsteps are great, the, the the animation of this thing is great. It's just a great legendary in my opinion, and it's a shame that it's not so useful on this this character, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Also, I really like Sword. Um, I wish that Sword, El I wish that Sword Weaver was better so that uh, we could play Sword as well. That would be the dream. And of course, as as you've already seen, I have legendary light armor on this character. Uh, it is perfected envoy armor, and it's with Berserker Scholar. Um, so yeah, it is uh, one of the characters that I that I have a lot of legendary stuff on. Um, so it's one of my I guess trophy characters. But as you can see from the fact that I've only played it for eight hundred ninety eight hours. Um, don't have a ton of time on my weaver and my weaver gameplay would definitely show that um but the fact is as you can see that it's a lot more hours than my thief or my guardian which were things that i played quite a bit of in dungeons i played quite a bit of ellie in dungeons uh back during the dungeon days um so yeah when when the uh fgs days and the the ice bow and the the lightning hammer days i did play a lot of ellie all right, moving on, we have my druid, or my ranger, I guess you would say. Ranger currently geared in uh, full harriers, um, full harriers druid setup for healing, um, but I also keep my legendary uh, medium on this character uh, this place is not really lit well for it um, but yeah you can see there's legendary medium I love this die set on the medium it looks really really good um, yeah I just I like I like the dies I'll show you the dies it is abyss scorched 
and Ember Red. And then Crushed Bone for the bone uh, highlights. I don't know. I, I really, really like the look of, of this character with this setup. Um, I, as far as weapons go, I have uh, I use Bloodstone weapon theme, the Bloodstone uh, gem store skins, or whatever they are uh, for this theme. I think that they go really well with uh, with this character, especially if we do this and put the uh, and put the the axe torch on, or we go uh, well. I guess we'll put dagger in the offhand. But it, it could be dagger main hand if we were playing uh, Soul Beast. Um, but yeah, this is my druid. I have probably quite a few hours on this character. Well, 507, so it's right around the others. Um, I'd play this one a lot in raids. Uh, I, druid, I probably do like, I don't know, 15 to 20% of my raiding on Druid. So most of this guy's hours played are uh, on druid and raids and because let's be honest uh ranger didn't see much play uh before uh before hot so almost none of the almost all 500 of these hours are, are after hot so you look at something like my weaver which has 900 hours of which probably 800 of them were before hot and then you have my druid which has 500 hours of which Probably like 475 were after HOT. You can see I've played my Druid quite a bit more in the last few years than than most of the other classes. So yeah, that is uh, this guy. And we'll move on to my final character. Uh, and that is Nike. This is my, my warrior. This is the character that most people associate with my account. It's my main. This is... The one that I put the most attention to and 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 play the most. Uh, we will, you'll see the absurd amount of hours I've played on this character. This one is also in Draconis Mons, but not at the uh, rest of the place. Um, let's do Age first. This character I have played for eight thousand one hundred sixty-two hours, so ten times more on this character than my next nearest alt, which would be my Ellie. It is set up right now for Raid, uh, Condi, Berserker. All right. Now, going through this guy's gear and stuff is going to be um, uh, kind of lengthy. So we'll start with the gear I'm not using. I am not using my Berserker. Uh, I have a Berserker Ascended Heavy set that I'm not using. Um, I guess I, I use it for Spellbreaker and Fractals, but I don't really Fractal much anymore. Um, I have... Uh, both of my legendary incinerators, uh, twice told legend. These are actual, not reskins. These are the actual incinerators. Uh, I have my actual frost fang, my actual twilight, or my actual eternity. Um, I have an extra twilight with impact sigil for keep construct when that was a thing, and I have a power sword uh, for open world mobility, along with my actual howler. My actual moot, my actual Flame Seeker Prophecy. So lots of legendaries on this guy. Uh, obviously, this is where I would keep most of my legendaries because this is one of my this is my centerpiece character. So I'm going to have the most of my legendaries there. Um, so I have legendary Kudzu set up for Kandi Berserker. I have uh, legendary Rodgort, legendary the Shining Blade. Um, The, uh, I was looking at the bolt because I was wondering if that was my real bolt. No, my real bolt is on my, my NG, or not my NG, my, uh, my Ellie. Um, but it has, uh, don't really want it on this guy as long as I have the Shining Blade. So, yes, have the Shining Blade here on this character. And as you can see from that, I am wearing, uh, heavy legendary armor. Uh, died full shadow abyss, of course, um, and uh, I, I like it. I like I, people don't like this this armor. I like the way it looks. I do hide the helm. I think that the helm uh, isn't. I mean, the helm is cool, 
But when you're not, when you have your weapon stowed and you're not in combat, I think the helm leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, it looks cool in combat, but like when you're just running around, I don't know, it looks kind of goofy. I'd rather show my character's, my character's face. Um, especially since a lot of my, my branding has the character's face. All uh, right. Uh, as far as trinkets go, I have my legendary ad infinitum here with two ghostly infusions, one expertise, one condition damage, which gives me a little bit more uh, of the effect. I have my Mordrum loop with a karma enrichment. Um, I picked my trinkets based on... This character actually has thought put into its trinkets, which is probably like way too much thought. I picked my trinkets based on w picking the one for that slot that was the most prestigious. So the most prestigious back piece that I have is ad infinitum. So I put that on there. The most prestigious uh, amulet that I have access to is the Mordrum Loop. So I put that on there. Um, I have Aurora with a liquid Aurelium Condi Damage Infusion. That's where the gold little the gold sparkles you can see on my character are coming from, and the and the gold fog aura. Uh, if you want to get a better view, I'll take my ghostlies off, so you can kind of see the gold a little bit better there. Um, but yeah. Additionally, I have the Hateful Swirl, which is the precursor to the legendary ring that we were able to get uh, in the new raid wing. Um, and, uh, hope, and this will hopefully, uh, before too long, be a legendary ring. Um, then my other two are the, uh, Attuned Malicious Besiegers Ring from Wing, I think, 3, and the Jagged Keep Fragment, which is definitely from Wing 3 from Keep Construct. Um, I was going to, I used to have just regular, like, the open world, uh, Living Story season season three map earrings and rings, but I'm like no. For for whatever little prestige there is in 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 clearing wing three, there's still more prestige in in these than there is in uh, in in farming uh, farming winter berries. So I, I prefer raid uh, raid uh, equipment over that. Um, and then lastly. Uh, I have an ascended power level aqua breather with a infusion in it. Incidentally, um, power warrior underwater is actually good, so that's why I have that. I have my Kamahalo Kataki actual legendary spear. I hope that someday, someday in the net, maybe in the next X pack, that warrior gets to use spear on land. I would love to be able to wield my Kamahalo Kataki as a weapon on land, either as a thrown weapon or as a melee weapon, power DPS, like meta build. Oh man, that would be really awesome if we could have Kamahalo Kataki on land. And then incidentally, I also have my Frenzy because I had nowhere better to put it. Um, it is set up for Kondi damage because that's like, I guess what it's good at is, is Kondi damage. Um, it's, I mean, it's kind of a, a a dumbass weapon but I needed to make it because I wanted to have all of the gen 1 legendaries unlocked and I do uh, this was one of the last ones if not the last one that I needed to finish all of the gen 1 legendaries so I made it and I just put it on my warrior uh, because what the hell else am I gonna do with it um, so we kind of touched on my warriors inventory or equipment but what other stuff do I have in my inventory people always ask me this and I thought I'd go over it um, I'm going to ignore the shared inventory slots. We're going to talk about that in depth later on. But so in my inventory, I have the Spear Marshal's Plea, which I guess uh, I don't really use anymore. I could probably just put this in my bank uh, hidden away. But I don't know. I like it. I like being able to teleport to uh, the, the domain of whatever it's called, the, the place way down, way down south of Abbey. Um, so, yeah, it's a free teleporter to Abbey. Um, I have 170 red lentil sabozas and 170 writs of masterful malice. These are the best in slot condi damage foods. Um, and as you can see, I'm using metabolic primers to keep them going. These are best in slot condi damage foods, and I use them in raids, uh, so I keep those handy. Um, if and when Power Warrior makes a comeback in the meta, 
I will put whatever the best in slot power food is in here, but for now it's not really worth keeping them in here. Um, I have shitty boon duration food. This is really for if I'm doing like a lot of open world exploration, like mapping or whatever. Uh, I use this just to run around and it's the cheap stuff. The expensive stuff is spring rolls. These are the best open world food because you can maintain perma swiftness super easy uh, just doing map complete. This is like the best food for map completion. Uh, and so I keep it around for when I'm doing open world adventures. I have a Gleam of sen sen Sentience, which is like the combine combination of the different uh, the different uh, eaters all put into one, combined into one item, which I like having. I have the Karmic Converter. I forget what achievement you unlock this is, but you can buy stuff every day. Every now and then there's something worth buying. Lay Energy Matter Converter that you get from doing Dragon Stand, I think, within a certain time period. It lets you buy stuff, and some of the stuff's really good, and I, I buy that quite a bit. Really valuable. Uh, Star of Gratitude is here. Princess is here. You get that for doing the Karka Collection in Lion's Arch. Pretty cool. Um, and then some other consumable stuff that you don't see much. Med Pack. Med Pack is a consumable that you buy from a hard vendor. Um, so, why would we want Med Pack? Yeah, you can drop like a healing bundle, which is whatever, and uh, run over it and you can heal yourself. But what's really good is you drop the stimulant pack, and when you run over it, you get fury and swiftness. A lot of people use this in back in the day when soloing dungeons, because it was actually, in a lot of times and places, hard to keep up um, swiftness especially in the middle of a fight. Like if you were doing a loopy solo, it's when you're doing a loopy solo, most people probably don't know this anymore, but, but keeping up swiftness during a loopy solo is, is vital, especially in phase three. So a lot of people would use these, uh, so that they'd have enough swiftness in phase three and to keep up perma fury. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what med packs are for. Um, scale venom, which there's really no use for anymore. I just keep it for old time's sake. Um, for a while in Fractals, the bosses were actually affected by Scale Venom, and you could put weakness on them, and they wouldn't kill you in one shot. Uh, people probably don't remember, but way back in the day, yes, like I said, bosses, could you could have weakness on them, and it would lower the damage that they dealt to you. Fractal 50, Moss Man in particular, hit really hard. If you ate an auto attack from Moss Man, it, if you were a light armor class, it would one-shot you. Uh, zero to a hundred, one hit. Um, it would even take a nice chunk out of you if you were a, uh, a warrior. So, what people did, especially since there weren't, there weren't really potions, and the only other alternative was to use, like, sharpening stones, most people used scale venom so that there would be perma weakness on the boss, and his hits would be a lot weaker. Um, but, I mean, there's really no use for that anymore. I just, I don't chuck it for that, for whatever reason. Um, Ogre Pet Whistle. Ogre Pet Whistle is super annoying. It summons like a little Ogre Pet, which I'll show you. So now I have a Melandry Stalker. So what is this for? What this is for is when you're doing a Loopy solo, when you phase Loopy from phase one to phase two, he summons a Grub that will target the nearest enemy to Loopy and give it like a three second knockdown. Well, you don't want that to be you. So you don't want to be knocked down when you're fighting Loopy for three seconds. So a lot of people would bring stability in their build uh, to avoid the knockdown from the grub. Or what you would do is when you were beginning to phase Loopy, you would keep your inventory open, pop your Ogre Pit Whistle, have the grub aggro back up a few steps and have the grub aggro onto the Melandry Stalker and knock it down. And then you could proceed to fight Loopy. Um, the problem is, as you can see, I popped it. You get one shot at it. It has a 30-minute cooldown, meaning if you fail to kill Loopy, uh, you're not going to be able to use your Ogre Pet Whistle for a little bit, um, and that's kind of annoying. The other one, though, it, the other way you could do this was with a... Oh, I guess I can't... I guess it doesn't work because I have my Ogre at it. It will only give me one summons. But it's the same deal. It summons. It's the same deal. The fire elemental powder. It summons a fire Ellie, which functions just like the stalker. Um, probably does a little bit more damage than the stalker. Uh, 
but but yeah, uh, that's what the fire elemental powder is. So going back, uh, I have my birthday blaster. Every single person in the game has these. I have my uh, utility primer and metabolic primers from my home garden. I have my cheapo condi food. So when you see me at uh, when you see me at the Shack Garant uh, doing that meta event or any other meta event in the open world, I am probably popping these foods. Um, I have my miniature tonic and my embiggening tonic. I really like both of them. Uh, the embiggening tonic's really good for getting screenshots because your character looks bigger and fills up more of the screen. Yeah, so I'll keep those with me. Uh, black line chest, da da da. Instant repair canisters, which I do not need anymore because I have an endless repair canister, but I keep them here. Uh, I should probably put them back in my bank, but whatever. Um, I have a brandstone multi tool. I don't know why I have this, I've never actually done that event. I don't know what the point is of that, but I keep it here for whatever reason. Um, Philosopher stones I keep on my character because I end up using these quite a bit when I'm uh, uh, like just doing like daily Mystic Forger, and I just want them in my inventory. Um, pots of Hylic potion. These are another consumable from the dungeon days. That very similarly to uh, the med pack gave you swiftness so people would run through dungeons with these and pop one and get swiftness and the interesting thing with the highlight pot is you can drop it and your your friend can pick it up and your friend can pop quickness or swiftness and then drop it and you can pick it back up and then you can run with it and you can uh, basically share these and it stacks with the Med pack, so you can use both of them to achieve perma quick or perma swiftness while you're running through the dungeons. And then lastly, I have harpy feathers, which are a heart consumable that will give you a few seconds of stealth. These were very, very handy during the dungeon days and allowed you to solo dungeons to uh, much, much smoother when you could run past the trash mobs with a little bit of stealth, especially in the old, old days when just stealthing for one second was enough to break aggro. Uh, that was really good. Uh, now the enemies will follow you um, quite a bit, and it's not as good. You have to be stealth before you aggro them. But back in the day, you used to be able to pop that stealth, break aggro, and, and be on your merry way. Um, so yeah, I think as far as my warrior goes, that's it. So, whew, we are we are done with characters. Let's let's get into some other stuff. All right, so we'll talk about sort of my uh, shared inventory slots and my bank and stuff now. All right, uh, so my shared inventory slots have uh, sort of utility items that I always want at my disposal. I have a Mistlock Sanctuary Pass. I think this is the best of those zones. I have some of the other passes, as we'll see in my bank, but I think Mistlock Sanctuary is the best, so I keep it there. My Executioner's Axe Toy, if you aren't familiar, this is a Halloween item. It's a toy, but why is it? Why would anyone want this? Uh, because of this. Uh, that wasn't super impressive, but it is actually sped up by swiftness and quickness. It it is really fast, and it moves you through the map, especially quick. Um, so executioner's axe toy quite good. Copper fed salvage dramatic. I think everybody playing the game knows what this is and why it's good. Silver fed, same reason. Uh, these are just useful items to have. Next, we have some of my ultra awesome items, my Perma Merchant Express. Um, don't don't go anywhere without one of these. They're always useful. Even more useful than that is my Perma Bank Express. Uh, having access to my bank anywhere, especially with inside raids, is invaluable. And the same thing for my personal trading post. Uh, these three are absolutely critical. And if it wasn't for these three, my enjoyment of the game would be quite a bit less. Um, and luckily, I bought these three when they were cheap. Uh, I think I got my Perma Merchant when it was 300 gold. I think my bank was like less than 300 gold because for a while, people thought the Merchant was way better than the bank. So the bank was worth like virtually nothing. It was like 200 gold when I bought it. And my personal trader... This was like super dirt cheap because no one really cared. This was like 100 gold. So I got these way early on when they weren't that expensive. Um, I got a mystic, per, my Perma Mystic Forge conduit so that I can open the Mystic Forge from anywhere. Really useful on days where I'm in the middle of a raid and I see, oh, today's daily Mystic Forger. I can just get that done during the downtime between bosses. 
Um, my per my endless repair canister, very, very, very valuable to me. Um, not because I have broken armor and need to repair it so often, but because I don't like from for uh, internet OCD issues. I don't like seeing that little broken arm, damaged armor uh, icon on my health bar, so I constantly have to fix it. Um, and then last of my perma kits is my perma self style hair kit. Um, so I can on the fly change my looks even though I never change my looks uh, I could if I wanted and that's what's important and for a while during dungeon the dungeon days It wasn't a record run You couldn't do a record run if at some point in the run you didn't change your character's hairstyle um, It was the ultimate way of showing how casual you were treating this record run and how uh, you were casually doing the record run with casually enough to change your hairstyle while the other people who are such tryhards can't beat your time and they're also going full tryhard. So it was it was kind of a, a screw you and, and I like that. Um, my permanent, permanent portable provisioner. This is the World v. World provisioner deal. So you can buy sorts of all sorts of, I don't know, World v. World stuff. The most useful thing for me are the the cheapo foods in case I ever need those. But yeah, all sorts of cool stuff on there. Uh, my Infinite Mist Omni Potion, which doesn't do anything in the open world, but it gives you all the fractal potions. Uh, I don't do fractals anymore. Uh, I've stopped doing fractals. I, I, For a lot of different reasons I don't want to get into, I don't do them anymore. But if I ever did go back to doing fractals, I would have my Omni Potions good to go again. Um, white Mantle Portal Device. Uh, you can drop a portal. We'll see if any of these... Oh, there's no real players here. But, uh... Yeah, it's a nice way for a warrior to... gain access to a portal. Um... This is actually useful in fractals, in a couple different fractals, especially, uh... Cliffside Fractal, I believe. Um... But, really, it's kind of a, a niche item... Maybe helpful at jumping puzzles to help your friends. Um, I keep a Black Iron Salvage Kit with me at all times so that I can salvage and sell my Force Sigils. Um, now I have three Perma Gathering Tools. Uh, I have on my Warrior uh, Perma Gathering Tools already, but these are for my alts. So as you saw, my alts are parked at different gathering nodes, and every day I do my gathering routine with them. I will go into the hero panel when I log in, equip these, replacing their their normal ones, do my gathering, and then put the normal ones back on, and then equip these on my next character. Rather than buy uh, perma gathering tools for all my characters, I want uh, my I want I just want to put them in shared slots and do it that way. Next up, we have the portable magnetite shard exchanger. This is the raid. Thing, which I eventually assume we're going to get the sequel to this with um, the we'll get the sequel to this with the next wing or the wing after, where I can just buy raid gear on the fly and, and various things if I want and do and most usefully I can trade my minis in the extra minis that I don't want I can trade in for more shards. Um, keep that there. Uh, next season four portal tome. This only can really take you to the domain of Viston at this point, but this will probably get more useful as time goes on. And my Season 3 Portal Tome to take you to the Season 3 maps. Although I think there was an extra map that I never bothered to get the uh, the Portal Tome the, the tome for. Um, I guess I could go back and get it, but whatever. And then lastly is my Candy Corn Gobbler. You might be like, oh my god, why do you have that? Candy Corn Gobbler does... It eats candy corn and it transforms you. But it also gives you Magic Find and uh, Experience Booster... And, and and that sort of thing. And the experience booster, it's really, really good in World v. World. It gives you World v. World rank and, and levels and reward track uh, faster. So before I do a long World v. World session, I always spam this till I have hours and hours and hours of, of reward track booster. Um, so that's why that's there. Um, so that's it for my shared inventory. Now we will talk about my bank. What's in the bank? All right, so my bank tab, I'm not going to go through everything in depth and explain what every single item is, but uh, I'll give you the, some general overview. The first tab in my bank is my food raid consumables tab. It's all stuff that's best in slot or expensive 
Um, for one reason or another, I also keep metabolic primers and stuff here. And for whatever reason, my my Lily of Elon thing is there. Uh, I, I, like I said, I use the, the Mistlock Sanctuary, so I don't need the Lily of Elon. But I keep most of my consumables here. Some of the stuff isn't really meta anymore, like Seaweed Salad or Bountiful Sharpening Stones. But they were at one point, and, and that's why they're here. And the Bountiful Sharpening Stones, I got... Uh, look how many I have. These cost, like, about a gold each to craft at the time. Uh, yeah, these were about a gold each to craft at the time. And uh, they got nerfed to uh, being useless. And I can't bring myself to delete them because I know how much I paid for them. Uh, but everything else is, is meta in some time or place. Um, my second tab is my dungeon potions for dungeons or some fractals uh, where potions are still best in slot. I will pop those bad boys on. And then the other half of this tab is my backup black lion salvage kits for when the one I keep in my shared inventory slot runs out. Third bank tab, XP things, um, like for leveling. Fucking silver waste shovels that suck. Candy corn. Just kind of random stuff. I have two two regular hair kits. A shoulder scarf. Um, bell choir. Script worker contracts. Whatever that's worth. A bunch of more leveling stuff. Four Hall of Monuments portal stones, which I keep for no reason that I can decipher. Um, and then four Zealots in intricate gossam insignias. Can I tell you what, guys? Someday Zealots is going to be meta. And I'm already gonna I'm already gonna have these, so uh, those were free. That's why I have them. Um, next bank tab, besides this uh, cured thick leather section and this uh, packed scout mapping material, this bank tab is all. Oh, and I guess uh, this this viper's aura calcum imbued inscriptions and this chest of inscriptions. This stuff is all uh, just ascended weapons or 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 and one backpack that I don't need. They're all extras at this point, and in case I ever have to regear a character, or 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 for whatever reason, whatever reason I have to regear or re-equip a character, I uh, I put that stuff here, and I can easily pull it out and and equip my characters. Um, a lot of some of the stuff came from raiding. Uh, in fact, almost all of this came from raiding. A few chests left from when I ran fractals all the time, but most of the rest of the stuff is all just raid drops that I've saved up. Um, and some of the stuff like the cutting edge from... Whoops. The cutting edge is from... Uh, uh, the cutting edge is from the POF Profession Collection. From when I... Or Elite Spec Collection. I just wanted to preview that. It is the engineer or the hollow smith sword um, that you get for the hollow smith thing. I guess I should use it on my hollow smith, but I don't want to, so I won't. My next tab is similar. This is all armor chests, ascended armor chests. Almost all of these are fractals. Um, the uh, some of the stuff's from raids, but uh, but not really. And then someone just asked me a question. In whisper in map chat so I'm gonna answer them back um, but yeah so the uh, these are all ascended either trinkets or weapons or not weapons ascended trinkets or armor so that I can regear my characters as needed without really having to spend any resources to do so um, some of the stuff I should probably just salvage I don't really know how many more healers rings I'm going to need but I just keep them whatever if I got space, I got space. This is where my organization of my bank starts falling apart. I have stuff kind of scattered everywhere. Um, I have stuff from crafting uh, Astralaria, which I'm not done with. I have like random food, Mystic Crystals, uh, a, a total makeover kit. I have some stacks of Elderwood Planks that I'm saving for when the Longbow Legendary comes out. I have extra runes. Uh, these are runes that are Harder to get than others. Aristocracy runes, somewhat challenging to get. Rune, nightmare runes, somewhat hard to get. Trapper runes, kind of annoying. And then stuff that might be meta again someday in the future. So I just I just keep them. There might be a time and place where Flame Legion runes become meta. Uh, Balthazar runes could be meta in the future. They're good. 
and altruism runes could in the future be meta, so I just keep them on hand for, for whatever reason. Um, I also have a couple, I have fireworks for when I'm really min-maxing XP gain, like to level masteries or something. Next X-Pack, I'll have that. I have a, a Seraph's inscription that I'm keeping here and a Seraph's insignia in case I have to make Seraph's gear. Um, two Zealot weapons, because like I said, Zealot's gonna, Zealot's gonna have its day, guys. Um, my next bank tab is mostly like costumes and transformations. Like I have ton, like I keep a lot of tonics here. My hot air balloon souvenir. Like I have a lot of like outfits and tonics in here. Stuff I don't want to part with, um, but I'm keeping for for no good reason. Um, stuff like raid drops, like ectoplasm residue that um, I don't have. They'll, they'll never be used for. Um, infinite slub tonic. I have an extra chaos glove skin. Um, I have a Calabog Origin. If I ever want to make another character, another weapon look like Calabog, which I don't, um, I keep my golden fractal relics here. But yeah, this tab is is mostly stuff that I'm hoarding to make um, the legendary longbow or whatever when that when that happens. Um, but I also have an upgrade extractor. And I have Assassin's Trinkets. Assassin's Trinkets are actually very difficult to get, so I'm not going to delete them when I don't need them. And there is a very good chance someday in the far future these will become meta again. Um, I have Integrated Fractal Matrices here. Blah, 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 blah. Exalted Portal Stone. And then uh, some cheap food. This next tab is mostly my world... One of my World v. World tabs. My warrior has more gear than what he just keeps in his inventory. This is my warrior's uh, Trailblazer Condi gear. When I roam in World v. World, as rare as that is, I am not above playing a very cancerous build. I will play full Trailblazer Condi Warrior Roamer. And you can see I have the trinkets and the and the weapons. I will cancer you, you and I have no... I don't feel bad about it. So, if you fight me roaming in world of your world i will cancer you and, and that'll be good um i also have infusion extractors here two gifts of battle that are waiting around for another legendary a gift of maguma mastery for another legendary and then i have sinister trinkets if if uh there's balance changes someday in the future that require swapping out some pieces of viper gear and swapping in some sinister gear i've already got the trinkets here saved up ready to go easy peasy um Next tab is stuff I don't really, I really don't want to part with that I'm keeping. Like I have leather squares, which are whatever. I have this random Brewmaster's backpack skin, which really no use for. Um, a random Timekeeper pistol skin that I won from Mela's stream. My legendary spikes. I have a revive orb. It's a spirit potion, which doesn't do anything useful. Um, but I'm keeping it, and then these crystals to make the guild weapons from the guild hall. And then all my blade shards. Uh, an, an identity repair kit, which is... I don't know why I, I, I don't need this, but I'll keep it, because it's very kind of valuable. Um, and then spirit quest tonic, similar to the Itzel Spirit Potion. No reason to keep it, but they're nostalgic raid items. And then right here are, all my, are, are my infusions that I'm not currently using. I have three Condi infusions... Th Three precise infusions and three mighty infusions, the world be world ones. And then I have an extra mighty, plus five, plus nine, two extra precision, plus five, plus nines, and one extra condi. So I've got those uh, in case I need to swap stuff around. They're there. Next tab is more stuff that I'm hoarding for the next legendary that I make. Um, and also, this is my Zerg warrior world v. world setup. I have my, um, my full marauders and scrapper rune set. Um, I have my full Marauders trinkets. I know some people would say, oh, you should be using Berserker gear. Whatever, I don't care. I don't, I don't want to die in World v. World. So dying in, in a Zerg sucks because you have to run back to the Zerg. It's terrible. So I'd rather just play it safe and not die. Um, I'm not there to, uh, to care about winning. I just want to not die and, and get my participation, let's be honest. Um, and I have the World v. World food I use. Um, and I have my actual real Juggernaut, which the only real use for this, unless Hammer Guardian made a comeback uh, or Scrapper, the only real use for this at the moment is World v. World Warrior, so that's how it's set up. It is my World v. World Warrior's main weapon. 
and I use that uh, whenever I can. Um, next tab is all Ectos. These are just resources I'm saving up. I probably should have been selling them as I got them because the price of Ectos just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. But they'll be back maybe someday. Ecto when Ectos go back up to 40 silver, which may happen someday, who knows? The economy changes all the time. When Ectos go back, I will be there and sell these and make a lot of gold. Next tab is boosters, all kinds of boosters uh, for whatever purpose I need. I have like a random ascended backpack. Um, my teleport to a friends, which are which were extremely useful when POF came out, because um, people would always get places that I wanted to get and I didn't know how to get there, and boom, just teleport to them. And then I have some black line scrap tickets. I can get a black line weapon whenever I want, I guess. I just need one that I want. I have extra stuff that I don't need since I have perma versions, but I just keep them. These are from basically just doing dailies. Um, and then Mystic Forge Stones, which I keep, hold on to. Boxes of Fun. Hollow, hollow Fireworks. And then my last tab is the Tab of Tears. Um, some of the stuff is just materials I'm hoarding, like Obsidian Shards. I have some extra Magi's gear here for my uh, for any character, any healing-based character that might need these. Um, these were on my Druid, but then Harriers kind of took their spot, but I, I felt bad deleting these because they might be back in the meta someday, so I just decided to keep them. Um, I have my bags of gear that I'm hoarding. I wait till I have a bunch, and then I use them. My Royal Terrace Pass, when the Mistlock Sanctuary Pass came out, Royal Terrace Pass kind of got got made obsolete, so I keep that here, and uh, it's a relic. And now the real tiers. Um, before shared inventory slots, you needed stuff on all your alts. So I had three ex I had, I had three Executioner's Axe Toys extra that I kept on my main characters that I played in dungeons. My Ellie had one. Uh, I think my Guardian had one. Uh, my Chrono definitely had one because I played, I played uh, Mesmer in dungeons. Um, but yeah, I had extra. And then the real tiers, the copper-fed salvage matics. I had one of these on all of my main characters. Um, then shared inventory slots came and made this many of them obsolete, so I don't have, I don't use them anymore. And then the saddest of all, my two extra perma merchants. I had one of these perma merchants on my Ellie and one on my Thief, because those were my dungeon characters along with my warrior. And... They are now completely redundant and just sitting in my bank. And I look at how much, how much gold that is. What is it today? As of permanent. So yeah, these are 760 gold each. So that's like 1500 gold just sitting there that I could have. It would be nice to have. Um, but that's it. Yeah, so that's my bank. I've got my stuff maxed. My bank slots maxed out. I want more bank slots, so if Anit's listening, you can do that. So, with the bank said, let's look at my wallet. Um, I have, as you can see, 6,509 gold at the time. Um, other stuff in my wallet. I have one gem. I have 4.3 million karma. I have 7... 1,700 spirit shards, 874 laurels. I don't really use those. They kind of stack up. Um, 143 guild commendations from when we used to run guild missions. I have 44 transmutation charges left. Most of that comes from World v. World. Uh, I have 10 PvP league tickets, whatever that's worth. I have 150 ascended shards of glory, whatever those do. I don't, I don't even know what you do with these. Uh, but okay. Um, badges of Honor, I have 2,800. I have 377 World Skirmish Token tickets. I don't even know what you do with these. Um, Proof of Heroics, I have a bunch of those from, uh, before, unlocking stuff before HOT, or before POF. And then I have, uh, Testimonies of Heroics for unlocking stuff now, if I ever felt like I needed to. 67 Geodes. 137 bandit crests, uh, 241 airship parts, 14 packed crowbars, 11,000 lumps of aurelium. So I have done a little bit of auric basin. Um, 
Nine Exalted Keys, 6,000 Leyline Crystals. Uh, I do a lot of the Tangled Depths meta. I really like the Shaq Garant. I think it's one of the best open world bosses in the game. It's good stuff. Um, some machetes. All right, now we're getting into the, the, the better stuff. Um, Magnetite Shards. I have 8,109 Magnetite Shards, so I could conceivably get anything I need or gear out any characters I needed um, that I didn't already have the gear for with these Magnetite Shards. Unbound Magic, whatever. Trade Contracts, whatever. I don't think those are really useful for anything at this point. LG Mosaics. I don't even know what you do with those. Um... Gating crystals. At the at the time of this video, I have 1,253 gating crystals. I think I'm number... We'll, we'll see you later in the video when we go over my statistics, but <clears throat> I believe I'm number six or something on the leaderboard, or I was number six at one point, and I think I fell because this week I only got 50. I got no unique drops. Uh, I, I'm in the top 20 in terms of gating crystals at the time. And the rush is to get to 2K so that when I get to 2K, I can buy the bench. Um, Fractal Relics, 3,600. Pristines, 1,000. I have, uh, I don't really do Fractals anymore, so these are probably all I'm going to have for a long time. Dungeon Currency, I have like 2K of each. Uh, Dungeon Currency, I don't really want to dip below. I just want to keep these as an emergency in case I need them for, for something. But I, have, I don't really spend my Ara tokens very often, so I have 14K Ara tokens. Um, I want to hold on to those and not spend them on anything. Uh, so yeah, that is it for my wallet. Um, lastly, before we uh, go elsewhere, talk about not necessarily achievements. We'll get into that elsewhere, but uh, account bonuses. I am at 95% gold find. Uh, I, I think you can only get that from uh, achievement points, which as you can see, I have 28,228. I'm not an achievement point whore. I don't go. I don't. I don't do everything. I don't do every achievement, every living world story. I don't do the PvP achievements. I don't do any of the stuff. Um, I don't really care about min maxing that necessarily and getting as many as I can. So my gold find could be better. Karma find twenty two percent. XP gain from kills thirty three percent. And my magic find is at two hundred ninety five percent. Fairly close to maxing that out. Um, I could just knock that out and do it in one day, but I've seen what happens to people that max this out. Eventually their bank fills up with luck um, because they don't want to delete it because it might have a use someday, but they also uh, are constantly in need of bank space, and my bank is almost already full, so I don't know what would happen. I don't want to just finish this. I could easily finish it. You saw how much Ecto I have, um, but I really I really don't don't want to. Um, so that's it. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is my home instance. All right, so here we are at the entrance to my home instance. We will go in. Um, I have already looted this for the day, so uh, a lot of the nodes are going to be... All the nodes are going to be eaten. Uh, but I'll at least show you everything. Uh, and you can see what I have. It's not the most pimped out home instance, but it's pretty good. Uh, you can't see it here, but I have a snow, uh, a snow truffle uh, node. I really like the snow truffle node. I have an aura calcum node here, a platinum node here, and an aurelium node here. I like those guys. Um, I have an elderwood tree here. I have the candy corn node. I have the watchwork sprocket node. And I have the crystal node. As you can see over here, I have the uh, exalted chest and the crystallized supply cache. I don't really use those, but I have them. Um, I have the brandstone node that gives you the crocotoric ore. Um, I have the living story node for the jade shards. I have the tree pack, um, and I have my Black Lion Hunter's board, where I get my bloods mailed to me every day. I got the tree pack. The Aspen one I don't bother with because those aren't worth anything. Um, petrified wood here. I have the cloth and leather harvesting pack. I have the, uh, the ember fire orchid node here. 
Um, coming over, I have the oysters from Siren's Landing. I have the Bloodstone Crystal Node. Uh, Bandit Chest Node. Might as well farm that long here. I have the Winter's Day Tree that gives you a gift every day. I have the b Berry Things. And then lastly, in my home instance, I have my Garden, which is growing me the stuff to make my primers. So yeah, it's not the most pimped out uh, node or home instance. There's people that have way more nodes than me, but like the nodes are kind of ridiculous in price. Like, like the iron node is 300 gold. Uh, it would take a lot, a lot of mining iron node to make that worth having in my home instance. Um, so I don't. I am content with what I have. Um, if anyone wants to gift me the Iron Node, by all means, go ahead. I'd be more than happy to accept that gift from you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's it as far as my home instance goes. So now we're going to get out of the game, go over to Guild Wars 2 Efficiency, and look at some statistics regarding my account. All right, so here we are at Guild Wars 2 Efficiency, where you can kind of get an overview of your account. Um, so first things first, looking at my account, um, my account value at the moment is 147,625 gold, which brings me to rank 874 on the leaderboard, uh, which I guess is pretty good. Um, but what's funny is you can see how... It used to be worth quite a bit more. My account was way up at 152 as recently as Jan as early January, and it's gone down. The price of materials has really, really crashed um, in in since the Living Story patch came out and people started farming Istan. The price of materials has just been in free fall. I know other people in the community that are more into the economics have have gone into that and explained it all, but um, if we lengthen the scope out here you can see uh my account value was on a steady increase things were steadily going up everything on my account worth a little bit more and more and more and more and more then pof comes out and my account has dropped in value when pof came out um mostly because the price of materials crashed i blame most of this crash on the griffin because you had casual players that needed the Griffin. And I don't blame them. Griffin's damn cool. But what they did was they sold every bit of material in their bank that they had been hoarding for who knows how long to get the Griffin. And it permanently lowered the price of materials. You might say, well, why do material prices matter to you? When materials drop in price, legendaries drop in price. As you'll see, most of the value of my account is tied up in legendaries. So... If legendaries drop in price, or if T6s drop in price by 10%, then my account loses a huge amount of value. Um, then it started rebounding a little bit, and then the Living Story came out right around here, and the Istan farming got out of control, and it dropped, and it's been basically flat ever since. So the account value, I mean, relatively speaking on the leaderboard, I believe right before POF, when my account was worth 193,000, I believe I was top 500 on the leaderboard. I was like four something, and then this drop knocked it down. But hey, the economy could change. It could be, it could be that gold becomes easy to get and materials are hard to get, and then the price of materials will skyrocket. T6s could go back up to 60 silver each, and then my rank on the leaderboard would go up. Um, so some some stuff here. Uh, my wallet, like I said, I have 6,500 gold in gold. My bank is worth... Um, the value of the, of the items in my bank is worth 15k gold, which is interesting. I had no idea. My shared inventory slots are worth 9,700 gold. Not bad. Material storage, 3,500 gold. Um, I have some gold waiting for me at the trading post. How nice. Um, I have 9,900. 9, that seems low. 
Um, nine nine thousand nine hundred and eight gold in unlock skins. I have so many legendaries. I don't I don't know what this figure represents because just adding my legendaries up, the value of those skins is way more than that. Um, I, I think the sixty seven thousand is a bit more of an appropriate thing. Four thousand gold of my account value is dies, which have taken a hit. Dies also used to be worth a lot more. Um, the rare dies on my account, like the Shadow Abyss and the Permafrost and stuff like that, uh, has gotten, and even stuff like Blacklight die and, and some of the stuff that I bought when it was expensive, but then since went way up in value has gotten easier because the birthday gifts are making it easy to get the expensive dies. So this used to be worth quite a bit more. Um, unlocked minis, only 600 gold of that. Uh, outfits, 700 gold of that. Uh... So, talking about my home instance node, my home instance nodes are worth 2,000 gold, which is pretty cool. Um, and then gem store account upgrades, 14,000 gold worth of that. Now you can kind of get a distribution of my characters of where my gold is. Um, my warrior, far and away, is the, the, the gear my warrior is carrying is worth 41,000 gold. Um, the next closest to that would be the gear my Ellie's carrying, which is worth 14,000 gold, because I have a bunch of legendaries there. Um, and then after that, it kind of falls off. My ranger has a whole bunch of stuff, um, but, uh, not even as much as my thief, because my thief has some, some actual, has an actual legendary. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that is that, as they say. Um, so statistics. We were just looking at wealth where I was on the leaderboard. I am at 847 in wealth. Um, anything interesting on here? Where am I in liquid gold? You might say, wow, 6,000 gold. You have a lot of gold. Um, I'm only 2,200 on the leaderboard in terms of liquid gold. Uh, plenty of people have more than me. Um, character value, though. My characters are very valuable. This is why... My bank isn't worth very much. As you'll see, uh, my bank value, I'm only 1,400, but my character value is top 200. The reason being, a lot of my wealth on my account, I've made a lot of legendaries. So if legendaries go up in price, then my rank for character uh, will be heavier on my account and will be a bigger part of my account value, whereas my relatively worthless bank um, won't matter as much. So the, uh, and as you can see, the character value steadily declining. And if we look at it, my character value, uh, again, right before it peaked, right before the X, it steadily grew, peaked right before the X pack and then went away. So I am relatively high on character value. Um, let's see, uh, theoretically spent gems. Let's keep it a theory. Um, theoretically, I've spent 135,000 gems. I don't even want to think about what that would be in money. Um, I get, uh, full disclosure, I do get gems every month from Anet for being in the partner program. Um, not a lot, but, uh, a good, a good income of gems. So I do not, do not believe for a second that I've actually bought this many gems. Um, but still, plenty of people, it seems, uh, about 9,000 people have, have gotten, have spent way more than me in gems. Um, so, fractals, I don't think any of these things I'm special on. Pristines, I, I have some. I, yeah, I'm like 6,000. I don't have that many compared to other people. Even magnetite shards, I'm not that special. I'm only 1,400 in magnetite shards because I have spent mine. I mean, I do spend them on things that I need. Uh, it's nice to have uh, my characters geared more than it's nice to have high rank on the leaderboard here, so I spend those. Legendary Insights. Uh, my rank is 108. I think this takes into account all the ones I've spent on Legendary Armor. So, yeah, I have... I don't have the max. There were... I, I've taken breaks from the game, and there's just been weeks where I didn't clear one wing or another because I don't, I don't really care. Um, but nonetheless, I'm still almost top 100 in terms of legendary insights. And then gating crystals, the new wing five currency. I'm 21 right now on the leaderboard. I was number six. Um, 
but I have since fallen because this week I didn't get any special drops that I could salvage from more gating crystals. And I got passed. Um, got passed got passed bad by the people that got better luck than me. Um, all right. Finished achievements. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not an achievement hunter. So I'm sitting there at 10,000 finished achievements. Uh, anything else that I might be high on? All right, legendary items, any? I'm number 80 in terms of legendary items. I have 41 legendary items. I assume that takes into account unique pieces of armor and weapons and backpacks and rings and, and whatnot. So I'm top 100 in terms of legendary items. Um, legendary weapons, I have 21 of those, so I'm ranked 245. Legendary armor, I have 18 pieces of legendary armor, so that makes me number 34, uh, probably tied with a lot of people um, at that. There's a bunch of people ahead of me, but who have made multiple sets, that's crazy. Legendary backpacks, I've made one, uh, so I'm not really too high on that. Legendary trinkets, I've made one, and there's only one available, so I'm number one on the leaderboard there. Yay. Um, none of these things, I, I'm certainly not anywhere special on those, nor those. Uh, let's see. World v. World stuff, uh, definitely not special. I'm not going to look at that. Um, deaths is always interesting. Um, I'm ranked fourth. I've, I have died 20,950 times because I'm terrible at the game. Um, I, uh, I am ranked 4,700 on the leaderboard for deaths. Interesting thing. You can see a big, uh, a big spike if we stretch this out. If we stretch this out, you can see a big spike in my deaths. Um, this was when we started going for Doom CM. <laughs> I'm sure quite a few of these deaths are Doom CM related. So, uh, so that that is what accounts for this jump, is our Doom CM sessions. Uh, like in in one day, I had I went from twenty thousand four twenty two to twenty thousand four ninety seven. So. In, in that one day, I died quite a few times. I'm I'm willing to bet that was a day that we uh, did were progressing on Doom CM. Uh, what are the player statistics in that list? What, what is this? All right, so I oh, don't care about that. You guys can look at that in your own time. All right, here we go. Unlock statistics. This was the last thing I wanted to show um, in in unlock statistics. So first, we're gonna look at achievements. And we're gonna make sure that it is only showing unlocked achievements. And then we're gonna sort it by unlocked percentage of the player base. So we'll go from my most common type, my most common achievements to the rarest achievements that I've done. So the rarest achievement that I have on my account is Silencer, which is finishing all the achievements in Wing 5, all the challenge modes and all that. So, and it's essentially the same as Death Eater. Death Eater is killing Doom CM. So there's a certain amount of people that have killed Doom CM, but have not done one of the other CMs to get Silencer finished. But these are two of the probably rarest and most prestigious um, achievements in game. Killing Doom CM, only 359 people have done it. And of that, I mean, what what did Anet say? Double digits of these are exploiters. So let's say 50 exploiters. So really only around 300 people have killed Doom CM. Uh, so it's, it's really the, the most meaningful uh, PvE achievement. Silencer and, and Death Eater. Um, also Legendary Armor. Only 412 people, including myself, have uh, unlocked all three sets of Legendary Armor. Um, I honestly thought that this was going to be a lot higher when I when I first saw this and first looked at this. Um, I expected that more people, more because there's there's way more raiders. Like you don't have to be a hardcore raider to to do this. Uh, a casual raider who did like one wing a week could have this. Um, 
but I guess it's a lot of gold investment too. Um, but I, I honestly expected it to be more than more than that. But in terms of the whole player base, uh, it's a very very small number, um, and I guess there is some prestige to that. Uh, the next one, Statues of Limitation. This is doing the Statues event in Wing 5 in under 5 minutes. Only a th under 1,000 people. It's, it's kind of easy, so I'm surprised that so few have it. Um, now, moving to other ones. Twice Told Legend. Only 1,260 people have this. Twice Told Legend is the achievement you get for crafting two of the same legendary. Um, before the wardrobe system, if you wanted your thief to have two incinerators, you had to make two incinerators. Um, so, Twice Told Legend is the title they gave out to people who made two legendaries uh, when they came out with the wardrobe patch. This was their consolation prize. And I guess it's an okay consolation prize because less than 1% of the player base has it. So, it's actually a pretty prestigious title, <coughs> all told. Um... World v. World Spring Tournament. Apparently, that's a title or an achievement. Uh, third place. We we did it. Yay, Blackgate. Go, Blackgate. There you go. Um, Coalescence 1 Unbridled. I have no idea what that achievement is. Um, gold Fractal Master. This is unlocking all of the Gold Fractal skins. I did that as fast as I could. It is a pretty... The skins are kind of ugly overall. I think most people would agree, but not many people have done it. So there's that. Harpoon Master. Yeah, that's right. One of the uh, the proud 2,000 people that have finished Harpoon Master. I believe that is the underwater spear. It's not the harpoon gun. People might think it's the harpoon gun, but it's actually the spear, I believe. Um, who, who knew? Warrior Underwater can kill a lot of things with, with its spear, and, and that will get you that. World v. World Premier Season first place. Only 2,200 people have this. Who knew that this was such a prestigious achievement? Um, and it's a World v. World achievement, and I have it. Think of all the hardcore World v. World dorks who don't even have this. This is, this is a, a, a very rare thing. So to get this, you, I think there were like five different leagues on NA and then probably like five on EU. So five servers on each region got it. And of that, only people who did the, collect, did the achievements um, got it. So uh, very rare to get the first place uh, one. And as you can see, only 1.5% of the player base has it. And that's on efficiency. The actual player base is a lot bigger. So they're going. So this and so this is probably going to be an even smaller number compared to the actual whole player base. Uh, miniature set collection. I didn't realize I had a whole set of minis. That's amazing. Um, exile execution. I believe that's killing doom in normal mode. Um, or one of these are. Uh, so one of these is killing doom in normal mode. Um, Real Raiders of Tyria, this is for doing all of the Wing 4 challenge modes. The ones that, uh, it was originally something else. I think it was originally, um, Solitary Confinement or something like that. But then they changed it to deal with exploiters and it became Real Raiders of Tyria. Something like that. So some of, so most of these are, are different raid ones that are, are somewhat hard to get i guess just because people don't raid um then as we're getting down now we're getting to like the elite specialization collection like who knew that such a small percent of the player base bothered to get the the silence of a thousand years or the cutting edge um i guess the cutting edge is a little more popular just because swords are more popular than daggers um and interesting god walking amongst mere mortals 4,302 players. So 3% of the player base got Gwam in Guild Wars 1 uh, and, and has it linked in Guild Wars 2. And then Champion of the Gods, uh, I believe this is getting 50 out of 50 on the uh, of the Guild Wars 1 Hall of Monuments uh, achievements. So full 50 out of 50 for, for that. Um, then going down, these are becoming a little bit less prestigious. Most of them are raids. 
You can see I even have a PvP one, Champion Legionnaire. I think that's winning 100 ranked games. I don't know. So most of these uh, are getting a little bit less prestigious now as we're scrolling through. Um, so yeah, that's enough of achievements. We'll look real quickly at titles. And we'll uh, go by things. So most prestigious title in the game as far that I have is Voice in the Void. That is for doing all of the challenge modes and achieve it's for actually it's for doing every achievement in wing five um including doom cm only 330 people have unlocked voice in the void which is odd because i think we just looked at the achievements and like the number of people that unlocked silencer was higher than this so it seems odd that you would have voice in the void but not not or you'd have silencer but not voice in the void because i don't know how you could get them separate but whatever that's someone else's problem um very uh, pretty rare title envoys herald this is the title for unlocking all three sets of legendary armor probably the second most prestigious title and then twice told legend my next most prestigious that's for again making the double of each thing grandmaster of golden arms the title for unlocking all the fractals things demons demise that is the title for all of the Wing 4 challenge modes. And Silent Savior is also the title for the Wing 4 challenge modes, but this one got exploited to hell. So they made everyone go back and redo it to unlock Demon's Demise. And then comes Gwam. So the rest of the stuff is just fairly pedestrian until we get all the way down to um, Loyal, which apparently almost everybody playing the game has Loyal at the other end of the spectrum. Even more people have Loyal than have Combat Healer. I'm not sure how you could have Loyal, which is like playing the game for five years, and not have Combat Healer. Maybe you don't res. Maybe you, you learn the lesson, don't res open world noobs. So if you take anything away from this video, it's don't res open world noobs. All right, moving on. All right, guys, this has gone way, way too long. I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to close this account tour out by talking about the goals that I have left to accomplish in the future. A lot of people go, oh my god, you've played the game so long, you've, you've done everything, what is there to do? So I thought I would end this by talking about the goals that I plan on doing still in the game. And uh, hopefully stuff you'll have seen me accomplish by the time I do another account tour someday in the future. Um, first goal is I want to complete the legendary trinkets uh right now we can have a back piece that's legendary and then the earring aurora um but ain't that said that eventually we'll be able to have all of our we're gonna have two legendary rings two legendary earrings and a legendary amulet someday we will have those things i would like them and my goal is for my warrior to have all legendary trinkets um so i will uh do whatever it takes to get those um the next uh, goal I have in the game is to complete all raid achievements in each wing after they are released. Um, so hopefully that means continuing to be part of the raid community and, and playing with good enough players that we can get whatever challenge motes or, or whatever completed. And uh, hopefully that will continue and I look forward to doing that. That's what I find fun in the game. Uh, and then the next thing is uh, I do plan on, even though I'm not, even though as I said, I'm not an achievement point hunter, I really do want to get to 30k AP. Um, I, uh, I, I think it's a nice, a nice number to aim for, and I don't think it'll take me too long to get there. Um, but yeah, 30k AP, that's definitely a big one. Um, and then lastly, we talked about it earlier. I think uh, before the next video, I will have maxed out my luck. I do expect at some point actually, Anet's going to up the luck cap. Um, so that might make that one a little bit more difficult, but, uh, but yeah, those are, that's, that's what I want to get accomplished. So, and then lastly, uh, the last thing I want to get accomplished is, um, I would like to make whatever the next legendary longbow is, um, long, like right now, longbow is a meta weapon for warrior. I use it every day on my Condi warrior in raids and uh, I really like longbow on warrior. But I don't like kudzu. I think I use it because I have to because it's a legendary. But I want something better, and I'm hoping that the next legendary longbow is better. And as you saw in my bank and stuff, I have 
tons of materials ready to go to make the next legendary longbow. So that is on my list. Um, hopefully it's not disappointing. If it's disappointing and worse than kudzu, then whatever, I'll, I'll make the next greatsword or whatever they do. Um, uh, but, but yeah, legendary longbow is the next item that I want to acquire. But uh, that's it, guys. This has been epically long. I hope it was at least somewhat entertaining. And uh, that's it. If you have any questions, hit me up below. And uh, I will see you next time. Peace. Thank <music> you.